Welcome back in our series about DAS Studio, the free content manipulation app from DAS 3D. I'm Javis Lewis, and in this episode, we're talking about object hierarchies, grouping, parenting, that sort of thing. And up until now, we've only been talking about kind of loose objects in the viewport. But as your scenes get more complex, it is a really good idea to group and parent things together. And those things may sound like the same thing, but they're not. They have uh, several interesting differences. Uh, we're also gonna be talking about how to duplicate objects and their hierarchies. And we're gonna talk about something, a mysterious new object called the null. And let's get on with that. I've got my retro scene here with the sphere, the cone, and the cube again. And right now they kind of exist independently from one another in the scene tab. So they're not related to one another. And uh, as a result, when I move one object around, the others don't move with it. And that's, uh, that's okay for the most part, but sometimes we will be in a situation where if we want to move one object, we would like another object to be moved in relation to the other object as well. And there's two ways of doing that. The first one is to create a parent-child hierarchy. And you probably know this from the characters when you've been playing with the characters. The character always starts at the hip and then everything from the hip onwards, it's, a, it's kind of a child of that object. So it's a little bit different with with bones versus real objects, but the principle is kind of the same. So let me show you what I mean. If I were to take my sphere here and I would drag the cone on top of it, then this little disclosure triangle happens. So now I can open and close this. And uh, that means the cone is now a child in a hierarchy, a child of the sphere, which is regarded as the parent. And the, what that means is that if I select the sphere and I move it around, then the cone is going to move with the sphere. However, the child, if I select the cone, will be moving independently of it. And if I move it somewhere else, if I move it like further into the back, and then I select the sphere, as soon as I do that, the cone will move once again with the sphere. And that's what the parent-child hierarchy does. And it's very, very similar to the grouped hierarchy with which I guess we could uh, we could probably do with another object. So let's move these guys uh, further over here and we'll focus on our cube. And in fact, let's make another cube. So let's move the cube over here and create another cube. So I could either head over and um, say create new primitive like we have done before, or if I'm kind of happy with the fact that my current cube already has a bit of a texture on there and I want to duplicate that whole thing with textures and anything else that this object has to offer, then I can also select it, head over to edit, and then head over to duplicate. And I get two options here, duplicate nodes and duplicate node hierarchies. And we'll see in a moment what that means. For now, it doesn't actually matter what I choose. So let me just go for duplicate nodes. And when I do that, then I get cube and cube two, the sequel. Anyway, um, so I can now uh, select this cube. So they're on top of each other right now. So I can't actually see visually that I have a second cube. So if I select that in the scene tab and then just move it out, it looks like I have two cubes. That's very exciting. Now, in, instead of parenting one to another, let's create a group. And a group you can make by heading over to create group. And it kind of depends how the group is created depending on what is currently selected. So if I were to create a new group right now, then the cube that is selected will be automatically put into the group, whereas nothing else will happen. Let me show you. I create a group and it asks me here what do you want the group to be called and would you like to parent the selected items to the group? And I'm gonna say yes, and I'm just gonna leave it as group one, so the default values. And now my scene tab has changed slightly in that I get a different type of icon at the top here and it now says group one. I can at any time, by the way, just click into this and call it you know, something else, a group, I don't know, my group, for example. But uh, group is fine, or group one is kind of fine. And I've got this disclosure triangle here, which shows me that that's what's currently inside 
the group, which is you know my cube two. If I wanted to move my other cube into the group as well, I can just drag it onto there. So drag the cone onto the group, and then both cubes are in my group. And if I click that disclosure triangle, I can tidy up my scene tab that way. That's kind of nice. Oh, that's not actually what I wanted to do. Sorry, the cone, also starting with the C, has made it into my group. I wanted the two cubes to be in the group. Then. So, uh, and then I guess the cone was parented to the sphere. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go, my mistake. So both cubes are in the group and the cone is parented to the sphere. So right, the main difference is that if I select the group, then I can obviously move both items in the group. And uh, now I can move each item individually that is in the group. So uh, I can either click the cube or the cube two, and I can move either of them independently without the other moving. So that's one difference in the parent-child hierarchy. Whereas when I select the cone, that moves independently. Well, let's move these two over here. The cone moves independently, whereas the sphere will move both objects with one another. But uh, that's not the only difference. Uh, so I have this this new kind of you know instance, if you will, a new object that is now taking care of both my kind of child objects. They're not child objects. They're kind of just grouped together. So the implication of this is that I can change the visibility and the selectability. So we haven't spoken about that either yet. So I'm going to just you know throw that in the mix as well. Visibility is governed by that little eye icon here. And that shows me which objects are currently showing up in the viewport. So if I select my sphere and I select that little eye icon, then the sphere is still in the scene. It's just no longer displayed. That's kind of nice if you have very complex objects in your scene and you think, well, I need to spin the camera around a little bit and uh, I just need to make sure they don't show up so that your computer isn't bogged down with using those resources. And that's one thing that you can do. You can switch these objects on and off in the viewport. So um, they will still be there and they can be brought back easily, but they just don't show up. And the other thing, this little arrow icon next to it, that is the selectability. So right now I can select any object because all of them are selectable. But if I wanted to say, hey, I've positioned these things in a particular place and I don't want to accidentally select them and then move them when I didn't mean to, you can just stop them being selectable. So that's this little arrow icon. You can click that and then it has this tiny little X instead of a tick mark next to it. And that means the object is still selectable in the scene tab, but I cannot accidentally go and select it in my viewport. So the cone is still selectable, but the sphere is no longer selectable. Very handy thing to do. I'm showing you this because right now the cone and the sphere, they kind of work independently from one another. And I can change the selectability or visibility on either object. The, the parent-child configuration doesn't seem to influence that. However, on a group, that's different. I can either inside the group, I can do that individually to objects, make them selectable or visible. But if I do the whole group, then watch what happens. The whole group disappears. So I make a group visible or invisible and the whole group disappears. That's not the case with the parent child hierarchy. If I make the sphere invisible, my cone stays visible. And that's something important to remember because that way you can hide large parts of your scene. If you have a large stonemason scene or if you have something that you've built together and you think, I want to, I want to hide the whole background here. I want to hide, I don't know, the three walls from one another. You can just drag them into a group and then make this whole thing either unselectable or completely invisible. That helps you build scenes and pose things around while you're building up scenes. So with groups, um, you can just hide a whole lot there. And same way you can just make the whole group unselectable. So with one click, none of these objects are now selected. Whereas again, that doesn't happen with the parent-child hierarchy here. I can make the sphere unselectable, but I can still select the cone. Different things. The only thing we don't seem to have right now, and this is where that third mysterious object will come in, is that even though we can select the group from the scene tab in which we can always select things, what we can't do is select the group visually 
in our viewport because it just doesn't exist as such. It doesn't have a handle as such that we can you know, tap into or point to or whatever we want to do. And that's where something else can come into play and that is something called the null object. Most 3D applications have that. It's an object that appears in the scene hierarchy, but it doesn't appear in your viewport. So even if you render it, that thing just won't show up. And it has advantages because if we create one, uh, just call it null one, and I will accept the, um, uh, the defaults here, then I can see that the null object has a 3D manipulator, and I can just about see it here as something that's displayed as, well, kind of a just like a, a cube with just the edges showing here. It has a 3D manipulator, it exists in the scene hierarchy, it is visible and selectable, but it doesn't show up. So what, why would we want to have that? Well, there's a few situations in which we may need that. So one thing is that we can now put the whole group into the null object, and therefore now the null object can be selected and moved. And uh, this is almost as if I would give my group a handle. So that's kind of interesting if you needed that functionality. It's, uh, it's one of those things that null has other funky uses. For example, if you want a character to look at something, then you usually have to go into their eyes and then the eyes are spheres and they're usually linked together and you can move them together with one another, look, make the character look uh, left, right, up and down. But uh, sometimes you just want the character to look at an object or at a, a point that doesn't necessarily need to show up. So I can make a character look at a sphere, but if I don't have a sphere, if I want them to look at, I don't know, a, an area in general, then I could define a null and make the eyes point at the null. And as soon as I move the null, the eyes of the character will move along with that. It's a funky concept to use also with cameras. You can make a camera point at a null object and then move the null object around and the camera kind of follows along. So therefore, therefore you don't have to go into the camera and reposition that manually. It's very helpful at times. And of course, we're going to learn how to do that in a later video. So that's a lot to take in. So go away and practice the parent-child hierarchy, the null objects, the groups, and the selectability and the visibility. Put a few items into your scene and just uh, play around with them. Put them into groups, take them out of groups, and see how you get on with it. If you have questions, then, you know, of course, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. There is just one thing we haven't spoken about, and that is, I'm just remembering that now, uh, it's this thing about duplicating objects. Let's forget the null and the group. Let's focus on the parent-child thing that I've set up here and bring that forward a bit. When we copied, when we uh, duplicated an object before, in fact, let me just... Uh, make those invisible. Haha, <laughs> very nice. And tidy things up. When we copied something earlier, I selected an object and I head over to edit duplicate and I get these two options here, duplicate nodes and duplicate node hierarchies. The difference is that the first one here, duplicate nodes, will only duplicate this one object. So if I do that now, then all I get is another sphere. And I get all the properties copied as well. So the, the sphere is also unselectable in the viewport. So that property has been copied with it. But what I don't get is anything below that sphere. So I only really get another sphere. So if I delete that and do the same thing again, I select my sphere here, which has got a cone as a child. I can go and uh, duplicate the whole hierarchy. And if I do that, then I get a copy of my sphere with all its properties, but I also get a copy of the cone in addition. There we go. That's that difference. I just wanted to mention that um, that's the difference between duplicating objects and, or nodes and duplicating node hierarchies. There we go. That was it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, then please share it with friends, family, and total strangers. You can also listen to all these episodes on my dedicated podcast feed. I've got one for uh, the general kind of 3D stuff that I do, but I also have one dedicated for this series, Das Studio 101. If you're feeling generous, of course, you can drop a buck or two into my Patreon campaign. And uh, other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.